A man drives through a quarantine checkpoint where he is stopped by guys in hazmat suits. While his truck is being chemically treated, the driver complains that his livestock got hurt last time. The inspectors say that these are just security maya sores, as there was a small leak at a nearby facility. After the end of the treatment, the driver continues on his way, but is distracted by a call and accidentally knocks down a deer. He decides not to remove the dead animal from the road and drives off. After a moment, the deer gets up from the track, as if nothing had happened, and we see that its eyes are covered with a white film. The story introduces us to the main character named Sok Woo. He runs a brokerage firm and spends the entire day at work, missing important events in the life of his family because of this. Even on his daughter's birthday, he entrusted the search for a gift to his assistant, because he does not know what his child is fond of. In the evening, Sok Woo receives a call from his wife, with whom they are in divorce proceedings. She asks to resolve everything peacefully and leave their daughter Suen with her, because due to work, the man does not devote time to her at all. But Sok Woo is not in the mood to give up the child and is ready to sue for custody of her. Arriving home, Sok Woo hears how his daughter agrees with her mother that she herself will take the train and come to her in Pusan. The father tries to calm the girl and promises that he will take Suen to her mother in the near future, but now he is too busy at work. He hands her a gift that his assistant has chosen. Inside is a game console, exactly the same that he gave her for her last birthday. Admitting his mistake, Sok Woo asks his daughter to choose her own gift. Then the girl again asks to be taken to Pusan tomorrow. Under Suwon's pleading gaze, the man nevertheless agrees to make concessions. Before going to bed, Sok Woo talks to his mother, who lives with them. The woman asks her son to refuse the divorce and save the family, as Suwon misses her mother very much. Now the girl is going through a difficult period, and she needs the support of her parents more than ever. The woman leaves and leaves a video camera recording of Suwon's performance at the school. The girl sings a song, but, getting nervous, falls silent, never finishing the performance. At dawn, dad and daughter move to the station. On the way to the train station, Sok Woo tries to cheer up his daughter and says that he saw her performance. He notices that Suwon has not finished singing and tells the girl that she should always finish what she started. Their car almost gets into an accident due to passing fire trucks and ambulances. They all rush to the skyscraper from which a fire is blazing. The train to Pusan is getting ready to depart. Cheerleader Jin he enters one of the cars, she decided to go with the team to the baseball game to support her beloved Min Yong Guk. Sok Woo also enters the train with her daughter, while talking on the phone with an assistant. The subordinate warns the boss about problems at work, to which the man says that he will return before lunch and sort everything out. At the last moment, a wild-looking girl runs into the train, which the conductor does not notice. She writhes in convulsions and runs to the toilet to bandage her leg, which shows a bite mark. At this time, Suen looks out the window and notices how someone attacked a station employee on the platform. A passenger named Yan Suk approaches the conductor and talks about a very strange man who is stuck in the toilet. The conductor goes to check on the suspicious passenger, and the curious Suen follows him. The frightened man huddled in the corner of the toilet cabin and in a trembling voice says that everyone is dead. The conductor decides that he is an ordinary crazy tramp and asks the man to leave the train at the next station. The bitten girl, meanwhile, moves freely on the train, but no one pays attention to her, even when she falls unconscious. Suen wants to go to the toilet and meets another passenger near the cabin named Sang Hua, who is waiting for his pregnant wife. The man warns the girl that it may take a long time and advises her to go to another carriage. The guide finally finds the bitten girl, who is shaking in convulsions and moaning. The employee of the train thinks that the passenger has a seizure and calls the doctor on the radio. A dozing Sok Woo is awakened by a phone call and finds that his daughter is not around. On the phone, a worried assistant says that there is a riot in their city that does not look like an ordinary riot. At the same moment, Sok Woo notices on TV the news that the military has been brought in to restore order. The man hears the conductors discussing on the radio that someone on the train has become ill. Frightened that it might be his daughter, Sok Woo hangs up and goes in search of the girl. The bitten girl stops showing signs of life. Communication is lost in the walkie-talkie, which is why the conductor does not notice how the revived corpse of the girl appears behind her. The passenger zombie examines the future victim with an empty look and rushes at the conductor. The girl is desperately trying to throw off the aggressive corpse, but it manages to bite her. The conductor instantly turns into a zombie, which causes a general panic in the car. The main conductor tries to get inside, but he is knocked down by the passengers, who flee in horror from the car. Right in front of the man, his colleague sinks his teeth into one of the baseball players and turns him into a walking dead man. Chaos reigns in the car, newly converted zombies attack the remaining passengers, and they try to fight them off with improvised means. The chief conductor evacuates the people, distraught with fear, into the next car and tries to contact the driver. Meanwhile, Sok Woo goes to the toilets and notices that some kind of madness is going on in the next car. 
Suen also hears screams and noise and leaves the toilet to see what's going on. A conductor breaks into their car and tries to warn the passengers of the approaching danger. But more clearly, the horror of the situation is demonstrated by the bursting zombie conductor, who attacks her colleague and infects him. Sok Wu grabs his daughter and runs forward as they are chased by hundreds of turned zombies out for blood. At this time, Sung Kyung, Sang Hua's wife, is just coming out of the toilet. In front of their eyes, the infected catch up with the running woman and turn her right in front of the entrance to the toilet. Realizing what is happening, Sang Hua and his wife run to the next car, while fighting off the zombies. Sok Wu closes the door in front of them, but then, nevertheless, lets them inside at the request of Suen. Sok Wu notices that the zombies don't understand how to open the door and just unconsciously hit the glass. But the infected still see them and sooner or later they can get inside. Sung Kyung decides to cover the door with newspaper so that the walking dead cannot see them. The driver contacts the passengers and says that the train will move without stopping at the nearest station. Then again Yan Suk contacts him and asks what is going on in this train, but he does not know the answer. Passengers are frightened and dissatisfied. Sok Wu is contacted by his mother and asks if everything is okay with her and her granddaughter. He notices that the woman speaks quietly and breathes heavily, and understands that something is wrong with her. She asks her son to take care of Suen, after which she begins to growl and the connection is cut off. Sok Wu guesses that his mother is also infected, but decides to hide it from his daughter. Approaching the station, the train starts to slow down, but the doors do not open. The people outside rush to the train in desperation and ask to be let in, but the zombies soon bite into them. The whole country is under massive zombie attack. The authorities declare martial law and do not let people out of their city. While all the surviving people move from car to car, Sok Wu with his daughter, two elderly ladies, as well as Sang Hua with his wife are separated from the rest, forming a separate group. The driver tells the passengers that the train will proceed to Taejun Station, where they will be met by the military. Hearing this, Sok Wu tries to contact his assistant to find out what the situation is at the nearest station. Suen strikes up a conversation with the married couple and old ladies. Sang Hua tells the girl that they haven't decided on a name for the baby yet. Sok Wu finally calls the assistant and learns that upon arrival, all passengers will be quarantined and their fate is unknown. The man arranges with an assistant to meet him and his daughter separately and take him to a safe place. The train arrives at the station, but there is no one on the platform and the driver does not know what to do in this situation. Yan Suk runs up to him and tells him about the quarantine and that they may not be allowed out of the city. He suggests that the train driver disconnect the car with the zombies and go to Pusan, but he decides to inspect the station first. While the passengers are moving to the depot, Sok Wu takes his daughter to another exit, where they will be met by people sent by his subordinate. They are overtaken by a stowaway man who has overheard Sok Wu talking about a safe place. Hearing this, Suen wants to warn the other passengers, but her father forbids her from doing so. The girl reproaches her father for selfishness and says that because of this, her mother filed for divorce from him. Passengers on the train make their way down the escalator only to find hundreds of infected soldiers waiting for them below. As if on cue, zombies rush at defenseless people, and they again have to flee. Upstairs, the stowaway notices two military men in the distance, and they, along with Sok Wu, walk towards them. Sok Wu receives a call from a subordinate who says that he has lost contact with his people, but the man himself is aware that zombies are ahead of them. The dead surround Suen on both sides. One of them tries to attack the girl, but Sang Hua saves her. He and his wife grab the girl and run for the exit while the baseball players guard the door and fight off the zombies. Sok Wu runs after them, but is attacked by an infected military man. The man is saved by the stowaway who throws his jacket over the zombie, blocking its sight. Sok Wu manages to run out and help the rest of the passengers hold the doors. Suen, Sion Kyong, and most of the passengers manage to make it to the train, but their loved ones are still outside. The conductor waits for someone else to reach the car, but Yan Suk insists that they move on immediately. Zombies surround the train and the conductor is forced to inform the driver that they are ready to go. The train starts moving, and the zombies break through the doors to the depot. Sok Wu and Min Yong Guk hop on the train, but Sang Hua can't keep up. In the struggle, he grabs the shield and baton of the policeman, and Sok Wu helps him climb into the car. The driver receives permission from the headquarters to go to Pusan and the military promise to clear the road to the station. Inside the train, passengers were divided into three groups due to the fact that they ran into different cars. Suen, Sung Kyung, and several other passengers got into car 13 filled with zombies, and locked themselves in the toilet to escape. Sok Wu, Sang Hua and Min Yong Guk ended up in car 9, the rest of the survivors in car 15. The men decide to break through to car 15, taking those who locked themselves in the toilet along the way. Armed with improvised means, the guys go on the attack. They make it through the next car without any problems, but in the 11th, the infected baseball players from Min Yong Guk's team were waiting for them. 
the guy can't bring himself to attack his dead friends, so Sang Hua and Sok would do it themselves. When things got really bad, the train entered the tunnel and the zombies became disorientated. The guys take advantage of the moment and get out into the corridor. There were even more zombies in the next car, and they all crowded at the exit to the next car. The guys wait for a new tunnel and go inside. To distract the dead, Sok Wu turns on the music on his phone and throws it in the opposite part of the car. Mindless creatures immediately run there, and the guys get to the 13th car and release their loved ones from confinement. Thanks to teamwork, the company gets to the 15th car, but they are not allowed inside. Yan Suk persuades the passengers to barricade the door so that the zombies do not get into the car along with the survivors. The situation becomes critical, because a little more and the zombies will get into the 14th car, where the guys stopped. Between passengers and the 15th car confrontation begins. They notice their loved ones among the survivors and try to push away Yan Suk, who has a death grip on the door and does not let anyone inside. Sang Hua and Sok would try to hold back the crowd of zombies, but there are too many of them. Sang Hua notices his pregnant wife starting to cry and decides to sacrifice himself. He asks Sok Wu to save Sung Kyung and says goodbye to his wife, and to name the baby Yun Su. They still manage to break into car 15, but Sang Hua and one of the elderly ladies die. However, not all passengers inside are happy to see them, so the conductor asks everyone who enters to leave the car. The company, together with Jin He, goes to the corridor, after which the remaining passengers of the car barricade the exit to them. But another elderly lady remains in the car, in whose eyes her best friend died. Out of the pain of loss and the desire for revenge, the woman opens the car door and lets in a crowd of zombies. The surviving company is trying to recover. Sok Wu calls his assistant and learns that the situation in Pusan is controlled by the military. But he also reveals the shocking truth that the zombie apocalypse started because of illegal experiments at a company that is Sok Wu's biggest customer. Suddenly, the train makes an emergency stop due to a traffic jam on the tracks. The driver announces over the speaker that he is going to find a new locomotive and bring it to the leftmost track. It turns out that Yan Suk and the guide managed to lock themselves in the toilet and they also managed to survive the carnage. A company of good guys decides to get outside and go to the locomotive. Yan Suk gets off the train as well, using the conductor as bait for the zombies. Meanwhile, a train engulfed in flames rushes towards the station at high speed, touching a train with zombies. While trying to escape from the released zombies, the baseball player and the cheerleader die. Yan Suk uses them as zombie bait to get to the locomotive. The rest of the company is caught between two trains. Sok Wu, Suen, and Sung Kyung manage to escape from the rubble, while the stowaway sacrifices himself to stop the zombies. A locomotive with a driver slowly drives past the trains to pick up the survivors. He spots Yan Suk who is being attacked by zombies and goes downstairs to help him. But the villain just throws the man to be eaten by zombies, and climbs onto the locomotive. The trio manage to reach the moving locomotive and leave the zombie-infested station. In the driver's cab, they find Yan Suk, who becomes infected and attacks Sok Wu. A fight breaks out between the men, during which Sok Wu manages to throw the enemy off the locomotive, but he manages to leave a bite on his arm. Realizing what will happen soon, Sok Wu shows how to slow down the locomotive and tells his daughter to stay close to Sung Kyung. Suen cries and asks her father to stay, but he pushes her hand away and exits the cab, closing the door behind him. Turning into a zombie, he remembers his newborn daughter with a smile and falls from the locomotive. The train with Sung Kyung and Suen arrives in Pusan. Before entering the tunnel, they have to get off the locomotive and continue on foot. The military at the other end of the tunnel at first mistake them for zombies and prepare to shoot them. But Suen begins to sing a song that she never finished singing at the concert, because her dad did not come to it. Realizing that living people are coming towards them, the military men run towards them. 